Um, yeah. So Frank the Tank, thank you. And Vince, it is a clue guy. It's a clue guy uh, Dubrovnik Red. So Will Red, so you're on, on the money there. And let's see. Let's see. Not your average Aquarius. Greetings. I'm going to try feeding these uh, Oreo crumbles some bee pollen to see what they think. Um, Ashley's here. Ashley N is here. Welcome. Let's see. I think I fed these guys some of this the other day and they ate it. They're pretty interested in it. I'm just not sure if they've eaten enough recently that they're not interested in food. We'll see. But uh, the Oreo crumbles are doing really, really well. I'm excited to uh, see them. And thank you, Frank, for checking in on the audio visuals. Always appreciated. And uh, oh, it looks like they're they're showing some interest. I mean, that looks like you know they're they're seeming to be a little bit uh, stimulated by the odor. Perhaps we'll see. See how they do. So these uh, Oreo crumbles, I got them back in the beginning of October, I believe. I think it was October 3rd. Let me check the date on here. Yep, established October 3rd, 2020. And uh, they have really been going to town, so to speak. Got a lot of them. Yeah, I like how sometimes the Oreo crumbles look really dark. It's, it's interesting to see. Uh, they seem to look darker than the original powder blues. I've never seen a powder blue get as dark as some of these Oreo crumbles do, which is kind of fascinating when you think about it. Huh. Well, they may have eaten too, too recently. We'll see. We'll give them a minute. It's fun to watch them crawl around anyway. Let's see. I'm going to just lift this up and we'll see what we got under there. Oh, look at that. That one looks just like a dairy cow, the one right in the middle. They're like mini turbo dairy cows. Oh, there's Eileen. Hello. Welcome. And thank you for asking your question. I'm going to make sure we address that. Oh, one of them got to the, the bee pollen there. So is the audio skipping for everybody? Uh, I hope not. J-Man, crystals, pets and plants, zero cool. Nice to see you all in here. So Eileen, thank you for asking that question. We'll be making sure to cover that today. It's a great question. I'm actually going to pull up my messages on uh, Patreon. We'll talk about them. Okay, well let me see if I can change the uh, playroom of the audio just a little bit and see if that makes a difference, okay? I'm going to see if I can... Uh, that is indeed B. Pollen Ziphos. I'm not sure, but here we go. Okay. Audio, how's that? Any better? Let's get a verdict on that. I'm just wondering if it's the, uh, my extension, my audio extension. If it is, I'll just leave it off. Okay. Did I say hi to J-Man? Um, I think I did. Okay, it sounded better. Not your average aquarist. Working on self-sustaining swamp terrarium. Mimic the essence of original terrariums meant specifically for growing plants. Cool. I think you could do some pretty cool things that way. So thank you, Sad Florence Toilet Pete, for uh, chiming in there on the audio. I'm glad it's doing better. And Eileen, too. Thank you. Appreciate it. Theropod Hunter, hello. And Jose, welcome. I'm glad the Orange Vigor are doing well for you. That's, that's awesome. I'm glad my videos have helped. <laughs> Call them cheese curds. I like that, actually. They do look kind of like cheese curds, don't they? Looks like some of these guys are carrying them off like, uh, like yours. They're not swarming quite as voraciously. Maybe they're just not quite as hungry because they... I think my daughter fed them like an hour or two ago. I think that's part of what's going on. 
the bug hub hello and theropod hunter you got the blue death fanning beetles now awesome i actually have a a video coming out on my blue death fanning beetles pretty soon i'm excited about that some progress has been made uh with the uh breeding uh experimentation i guess you could say the breeding project i guess more since they're already reproducing not your average aquarist dart frogs are doing well i've had them for quite a while now i guess uh probably four or five years and they've just been uh, doing well so moon over miami uh hello C. Reeves, how long does it take for a culture to become well established like this? I started out with about 20 uh, in October, and there are probably well over 100 in here now. Um, so, yeah, this species is a fast breeder too, so some species will take longer than that, but the more prolific ones do really well. Um, I, I would say there are probably, I don't know how many more over 100, it's hard to say. There are a lot in here um and i've already sold some so the science layer hello i don't know what the audio is well what's going on with the audio it might be just a connection issue i guess i don't know sorry to hear that so backyard bugs giant african millipede i have kept mardonius perilus acuticonus i think they may have reclassified that species so totally different genus than what you'd think of as the uh, normal giant african millipede doesn't get quite as big but it is a large African millipede, uh, and it is, it's more of a matte black rather than the sort of black and chestnut uh, rings that uh, you'd see in the other giant African millipede. There are some captive bred individuals here, but I have never kept that species. Okay, there, Pot Hunter, you're going to have giant darkling beetles and desert millipedes there. That's awesome. Any isopods that could survive in a very swampy environment? Probably, I think dwarf whites would be there. Um, Atlantosha floridana could do fairly well in that situation. And the yellow stuffed nasogaster is bee pollen. Any cubaris coming soon? Well, let's let's take a look at the cubaris, shall we? Um, we've we've looked at these guys for a little while. I'm gonna have to unhook my audio because I'm not using my cable. Well, maybe not. Let me let me play with that for a minute. Wow, hello, welcome. Let me see if I can um, reconnect my audio. Still skipping. Then, uh, how is that? Is it any worse, any better? What do we got? So millipedes and isopods are not both crustaceans. Isopods are crustaceans, but millipedes are diplopods. So they may if you go back far enough be descended from crustaceans and actually insects might be too depending on which type of cladistics you're into and phylogenetics you're into uh, but uh, but they're not very closely related because they're not in only isopods are crustaceans the way they're considered right now oh i love the bioluminescent springtails and science layer a gigas where does it, I think that uh, A. gigas is pretty widespread in um, many places in Africa, and some of them are seasonally dry. M I had family that used to live there. Uh, my brother used to live there for years and years and years in Africa, in their native habitat. And uh, in Tanzania, there was a town called Pemba, and there were the giant African millipedes all over the place there. And it was, it was more savanna like i guess than than f forest like and ashley there are indeed crickets in this room and so that's what you're hearing there the banded crickets um they're a little quieter than the house crickets and i, I like them better in most ways although they're better hoppers which i don't really like but uh, other than that yeah so Ashley and Eileen both had questions and I would like to get to those. So I want to make sure you know that I haven't forgotten. I'm going to move these guys, move my Oreo crumbles. I'm actually thinking of splitting this culture because it's going so well and they're popular. I just sold and shipped off some of them today. Um, so I might 
split that culture soon. If I had space for it, I'd definitely put them in a 16 quart right now. I don't have space right now. I have to figure that out. Running out of space for isopods. I have over 50 bins and I'm getting to the point where I, I need to be real creative with space. I'm trying to figure that out. So, um, yep. So it sounds like some people are getting fine audio and some not. So Mr. and Mrs. Morelia, whiteout ice pods, love those. Four more, powder blue Oreo, orange crumbles, and now whiteouts. That's awesome. I, I have those same morphs and I think they're great. So these are, uh, these are my, well, look at that. Look at all these springtails. That's Sinella curvaceta right there. I'm gonna make some adjustments here to see if we can uh, see some of the rubber duckies in this enclosure, shall we? Um, oh, Jose, can you mix orange vigor with zebras for a bioactive enclosure? Uh, might work, but I kind of doubt it over time. I'm guessing somebody's going to overtake the others. So there's a Cubaris uh, species rubber ducky. Now that I got some focus, there's probably some more inside this piece of limestone. And there's certainly a ton. I see some down on the substrate too. You can see a little one right kind of near the center of the substrate. I don't know if you can see that very well, but um, they are, they love this spot here. They're they're always in the in the limestone. Let's see if there's oh, there's a bunch of them. A bunch of rubber duckies hanging out with their springtail buddies. Um, and there's probably a bunch down there in the substrate too. And bee pollen. Well, this bee pollen. They seem to like it. I'm sure it's good for them. It's got a lot of good nutrients in it. How many do you see? I think I just see five of them right there. Um, and this was Smugbug had some and was uh, sent me some samples, so I wanted to try it out. And my isopods seem to like it a lot. Mm, millipedes that could do well in a terrarium with mineral ventilation that wouldn't eat plants at all. I don't know about not eating plants at all. That's a good question. I mean, Oxidus gracilis is the uh, greenhouse millipede. They're fairly small and people, they end up in places like in dart frog vivariums, not on purpose, but they end up in there and they do well with the low ventilation. They don't seem to bug the plants too much. What fruits and veggies do you recommend for feeding them? They eat almost any fruits and veggies, really. Um, nothing like spicy like a jalapeno pepper or, you know, I wouldn't do that. Um, and I would recommend washing and peeling everything and stuff, but I give them almost everything. And Frank to Tank, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I, I need more, even though I'm out of space, running out of space. I'm not completely out. I just have to get real creative about how I use it now. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to squish anybody. There's somebody back there. Okay. I'm going to try to put these guys back. Maybe we can look at my other Cubaris species. I only have two. Got these, and there are probably, from what I've seen, somewhere between 30 and 50, probably more than that now, uh, rubber duckies in this colony. When I moved them, there were somewhere between 30 and 50, so it's probably been a month or two or so, there are probably some more. They don't have huge broods of babies, but they do it often. So you might get half a dozen or so per adult female every, month or so so it's kind of a slow and steady thing unlike a lot of the other ice pods like I need to show you my gem mix holy cow they're exploding but they're all tiny except for the adults so here I'm going to show you as I try to catch up here hmm Okay, let's see if we can see some Cubaris uh, red tigers here. Oh, yep. Oh, look, teeny baby red tigers there. Check it out. Couple little tiny ones there. I think that's the smallest I've ever seen them. Uh, they've been breeding in here for a long time, but I usually encounter the uh, babies when they're older. Okay, catching up. Do you know anything about any Umbonia species in the hobby? I don't. I'm not even sure what that genus refers to, so I can honestly say I, I don't. Let's see if there's any on that piece. Nope, nope, none. Maybe this piece over here. 
Oh yeah, a bunch on this piece too. These are the red tigers. I like them. They're easier, a little bit easier. They were breeding for me before the uh, the um, rubber duckies. Zephos, I recommend buying limestone at an aquarium uh, store, marine aquarium store, either a brick and mortar store that carries marine supplies or an online marine store because you can get it for pretty cheap. Uh, and you can get the holy kind like I just showed you. I got mine at a marine store, a, a brick and mortar one. Uh, one of my favorite stores when I was visiting a town where I used to live. So I, I took the chance of going down there and picked up that for just, you know, a couple of dollars or something. That, that amount. And you can get it for, you can get large amounts of limestone for cheaper than that. But um, it's usually less, uh, maybe less holy. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to have the holy stuff because they like to cl climb in it, you know. So let's take a look at my Porcelio Scaber lava. I want to show you the little babies in here, if uh, any will show up. There's, there's some adults and a bunch of springtails. There's one that just molted. Armadillidium vulgari, hello. Oh, Umbonia, the invertebrates look like rose thorns. Yeah, I've seen those. I've never kept those. Rarest species of millipede that I have? I don't think I have any particularly rare species. I think um, Spirostreptus species 1 is probably a little bit rare in the hobby, as is uh, Hiltonius pulchris, and I have those two. But I don't think they're super rare. There are people who have them. Um, Ooh, Josh, we've got the Panda Kings going. <laughs> oh, you know what? Um, Panda Kings are pretty awesome. I, I, I like the way they look. I, I wish I could, uh, wish I had a permit to sell um, Q bars. I don't. I'm hoping to get some. Oh, Heather, yeah. Well, you know, I've got a ton of babies in here, so it won't be too long. I could probably, you know, we could we could do something about the lavas at some point. Um, let me see if I can show you all the babies. It's crazy how many are in here. I don't know if I'll unearth any here. Oh, you can see some. At least I just did. But the other day I lifted up a corner of the leaves and they were just everywhere. So many babies. So they're in there. Hmm. Okay, so I want to get to make sure I answer Eileen's question and Ashley's question. Maybe while we're looking at the isopods, I'll answer Ashley's because it's an isopod-related question. And then we'll move on to Eileen's question. Oh, uh, there's one more thing I want to share with you with the isopods here. Um, we move on to something else. Oh, look at that slime mold. See some slime mold growing in the corner. It's interesting stuff. Okay. Nobody on that piece, but you see what's... Oh, he's... Ah, that one's molting. I don't want to bug him. It's molting. Try this one instead here. Anybody under there? Well, that was underwhelming. Well, okay. Um, I'm going to explain to you what's going on here. This is my... Uh, my thumbnails. this species. It's, uh, here's one. This one seems fine. I'm just, it's not molting or anything. This is Armadillidium klugai Dubrovnik red phase. If I can focus on it. It is whether I can focus on it or not. That's not going to change its uh, taxonomy. But what I'm trying to say is, it is, um, I found Monkai in here the other day. I'm excited. Finally, I think Heather, you asked me about that a while ago. If I had Monkai in here and I hadn't seen any yet, but I just did. Like a day or two ago. So, yeah, Heather, I thought about culturing the slime mold. I really have. I have some petri dishes. I could do it. I probably should. So, okay. Well, my magic potions are doing okay. Why don't we take a look at the magic potions quickly? 
I, I can get so easily distracted. Haven't forgotten the questions. I'm going to talk about Ashley's questions while we look at the uh, magic potions, okay? So Ashley was wondering how long uh, or how many specimens of a morph that you want to, or a mutation that you want to isolate to try to make a morph, how many specimens should you have before you separate them out? And I think that's a good question. It kind of depends on what you're doing, but I would say if you find one and you're sure you want to attempt to isolate it, then one is enough, but you want to put it with maybe something like six to ten other individuals um, because you are more likely to have success that way. You, you're creating basically a genetic bottleneck where the frequency of that allele is going to be higher in future generations, and that's what you want. So that's what I would try doing. Uh, you don't want to you know, just isolate it too narrowly so that there's a very, very, very small gene pool. Otherwise, you could get inbreeding depression. Um, so that's what I would do. And Deanna Ogerman, hello. Welcome. Do molts provide significant calcium to isopods? I think so. I think they're eating them because they're reclaiming it. Now, these are these are my orange Dalmatian magic potion. Look at that one. It's gorgeous. It is a gorgeous individual. And see, I've got babies everywhere in this one. Um, there are lots of little ones in there. Hopefully you can see some of those. I mean, some of the very tiniest ones you're seeing are probably springtails, but there are a bunch of babies in here and they're doing really well. Oh, Jeff, you got some Porcelio Scaber Dalmatians and Dwarf Whites. Awesome. And Durman667, um, thanks for shipping my Punta Cana today. Oh, you're welcome. I shipped out kind of a lot of Punta Canas today, actually. Um, biggest order I've ever had on Aquarimax uh, was today. Big, big, biggest group of orders, I should say. And not specifically your order was the, the biggest, but just uh, I had so many orders going out. It was crazy. Um, let's see. Yeah, we could probably try that. So, Ashley, back to your question. I think um, if you have one that you really want to isolate, put it with six to ten of the other individuals in, in an enclosure by themselves. And then in future generations, if it is a recessive trait that's heritable, you're a lot more likely to get it to show up than if you just leave it in with the others um, in, in higher frequencies. Does that make sense? So, uh, yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Um, if it doesn't, let me know. I'll, I'll elaborate. But I, I'm thinking that's probably what you were you were looking for, hopefully. So that's my um, Orange Dalmatian Magic Potions, which are an American line. And let's take a look at the Japanese line while we're here. And then I think we're going to hit Eileen's question from Patreon. You know... I want to, I love my Punta Canas, but I want to get um, some, some different bud lines. So if someone wants to trade, because I feel like my Punta Canas are beautiful, but they tend to have like the same, same things going on to a large extent. And pattern wise, there's a few different variations and not as many colors. So I want to, I want to do that. So if you want to do some trading to get some variation or you want to get into something else that I have that you don't. So these are my Japanese line um, magic potions. I understand are male heavy. Um, they're doing fine. I mean, you see them. There they are. They're doing their thing. They're fine. They're not dying off. But I haven't seen babies in here yet. I mean, that could change any moment. I could see them while we're on the live stream and you can hear me giggle like a little kid. And that would be cool. At least for me. But uh, I don't see any right now. Any babies. But my adults are fine, as you can see. Doing great. I may just have a, a male uh, heavy culture. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, and PS has some dairy cows on the way. Yep, I shipped out a decent number of dairy cows, too. I think four cultures of dairy cows, something like that. So, Heather, you were getting low spotting on 
Scaber Dalmatian orange, just like just white, added a few regular oranges and ended up with orange koi. Awesome. Can we see some beetles? We can probably do that. So inverts and OI. Where do you list your inventory? I list my inventory on um, isopodsrus.com. Uh, it's also, you can get there by going to aquariumax.com and going to my price list too. It's the same place. It just all leads there. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's how you do it. It's pretty cool, I think. It's kind of fun. I'm actually doing some overhauls. And thank you, Heather, for putting that there. And yeah, I'm open to trades. Bug Hub said something about that. Some of the rest of you did. I'm, I'm open to negotiating trades. It's, it's fun stuff. I like to do that. Um, so. So I am not doing a lot of Cubara stuff right now just because I don't have a permit to sell them and I have to be careful. Um, what I spent, okay, I'm gonna, this is my gem mix, which is a new culture. But I, I want to see if I can show you how many crazy numbers of babies are in. I don't know if you can see how many baby isopods are there. You probably can't see as many as there are in there. But there are tons of little babies in the gem mix, which I'm pretty excited about. I lifted up something the other day in here and just, whoa, there were just a huge density of babies. And we're not seeing it so much right now. But that's frustrating. I wanted to show you. I was excited about it and everything. Now, did I lose my lid? I really like Gem Mix. I, I'm crazy about it, actually, just to tell you the truth. Um, all right. Okay. Now, we're going to do one more ice pot, and then I'm going to switch gears for a minute. This one, also one of my favorite... Uh, somebody just asked what my favorite ice pod species is. It's every species. I don't know. I mean, there are species I don't like as much, I guess, but... Um, I just get so excited about them. They're fun. Okay, any guesses on what, what species I'm going to show you right now? What species is in this bin? Um, yeah, someone asked me if I named my bugs. Um, Aten? R? Not most of them. Some of the individuals I do name, like I'll name my centipedes because I don't have a billion of them. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, but most of them I don't name. Um, that's no. Okay, Bug Hub, I'll be looking for it. And, okay, here we go. I'm going to take a look here. It's Flavo Marginatus. Look at those wee babies. And those aren't even, like, the smallest. I, there's a ton of babies in here all of a sudden. And... Sad Florence, yes, I will tell you what my least favorite species is. Not because I have like a personal vendetta against them or anything. There's some more babies. Check them out. Flavo marginatus. Gotta love them. I love how they walk so high up on their legs. And look how many little babies. So fun. Um, the species that I like the least. Oh, look at this female has a ton of babies just right there. Let's see if we can get a close up on that, huh? Look at those little, those are just monkey. They're just molting out from their first uh, stage. That's some cool footage right there. I did not expect to see that. I feel kind of guilty that I moved her now because how sad is that? But hopefully I didn't screw anything up. She's beautiful. Is she in focus? That is so cool. They're molting out and everything. Love these babies. How's the focus? I'm kind of wondering if uh, I'm stressing her out. I don't want to stress her out. Um, yeah, I better turn that over and, and uh, we'll let her, leave her alone. I, I feel bad. Sorry. But I really do love Flavo Marginatus. These were from Smugbug, um, a species that I just, I'd wanted for a while, but I didn't realize how cool they are. I mean, I, I knew they were cool, but just having them is, is a different thing. You know what I mean? It just, oh, sorry. Sorry about that. 
alarm went off on my iPad and that did not work. Um, so uh, I want to answer Eileen's question now, okay? I'm going to maneuver things around a little bit so that I can answer Eileen's question on Patreon. Hopefully I've caught all the questions on Patreon. I don't think I had any more uh, questions on Patreon that I can think of. I'm just checking while I get ready to... Uh... Yeah, I think that's all. So, I'm going to answer Eileen's question, but I need uh, some help first. My little buddies are going to help me out, hopefully, with this question. Ah, uh, there's one. Okay, one moment. I'm sorry that the background is boring. It probably is. Hmm, I'll be right there. Okay, Eileen had a question about this group of critters right here. So let's, let's go into that. Um, all right. So Noah, do I have any Shiro Utsuri? I don't. They're super cool though. They're like the dairy cows of the Kubaris world. Pretty neat. Um, let's see. Raw nature, hello. So th these are my red-sided garters and Eileen had a question about these. They just came out of brumation, if you saw my recent video on that. Uh, they were brumating from early December until early March, until March 1st. I couldn't wait any longer to take them out. And the brumation was very successful. All of them pulled through just fine. And they immediately began mating a lot right after brumation. And now they are eating. And uh, especially the female, she's really eating. The males are... Eh, not quite as excited about it. They're eating some. And Eileen wanted to know what I was planning on doing with the babies of these. This, this, this was her question that she put on Patreon. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Well, my female's fairly young, so it's probably not going to be a huge batch of babies. Uh, but this is, this is my plan. Okay, um, Don's Garter Snakes produced these. And he has requested some babies. He didn't give me a specific number, but he said like a few. So maybe we're looking at like a trio or something. And let's say I get 10 babies, which is not, not impossible. My female's not huge, but she's not tiny either. I might get more, I might get fewer, but we'll see. Um, let's say I get 10 babies and he wants three. Okay. Uh, that would be fine. And maybe he wants fewer, maybe he wants a little bit more, I don't know. Uh, the next thing is uh, I have someone local. We split... Uh, rodent orders together because she's a snake hobbyist who lives nearby and has, uh, you know, quite a few snakes. And her daughter has already set up a bioactive vivarium for one of these babies. So um, that baby is claimed. So say that I have 10, not an unreasonable guess, and that those four are spoken for. Let's just say that. Um, the others, I would definitely uh, be open to offering them for sale. Uh, for my subscribers and yeah so I will when it looks like the female is actually pregnant let's hope that that happens if if she turns out to be actually pregnant then I'll, I'll start an official waiting list and uh, we can see if um, some of the babies can go out to you all and then Don of Don's Garter Snakes he said if I have any other babies that need to be sold he can help me sell any others but uh, it would be pretty cool if they all went to subscribers. I would love that. Because then I'd know they'd be going to great homes, you know. So, there you go. And Andre, I have three. I have one female and two males. They are Thamnophis sertalis parietalis. Uh, the red-sided garter, not to be confused with the California red-sided garter, which is uh, Thamnophis sertalis infernalis. So, same species, different subspecies. And different location, too. These are from... Uh, Montana, this, this locality is from Montana. And Eileen, thank you. I, I really was kind of excited about the brumation setup because I had uh, 
you know, enabled some of my reptiles, some of my lizards to go through brumation before, like my leopard gecko, and uh, I'd brumated anoles before and stuff. But I had never done that with snakes before, so it was really kind of fun for me to, to figure out how to do it in my particular situation. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad you like that. And do garter snakes like an enclosure with swimming space? They do, but you just have to make sure that if you provide something like that, that they can also dry out completely. They need basically a dry area in addition to the pool because they will get skin lesions if they can't dry out. So as long as you can provide that, that's a good thing. Because uh, they, in the natural environment of many of the garters, there are some that are more terrestrial than others. Some are almost semi-aquatic and some don't really venture into bodies of water all that often. So it depends on the, you know, the species and subspecies you're working with, but yeah. And Mr. and Miss Morelli, I think, I guess I already said how many, I only have three, and I only have this species currently. I would totally be excited about working with more if I had the uh, facility for it, if I had more space. And Noah, I do go herping. Um, I actually have a couple of herping videos out. If uh, I try to do one at least once a year. I did one last year, Herping the Mojave Desert, I think it was called, because I live about four hours away from the Mojave Desert, something like that, four or five hours away from the Mojave Desert. And so every uh, spring I try to go, and I did last uh, spring. It was kind of late spring when I went last time. And the year before that, I went in early spring, earlier spring, and I did a herping video about that too. So I think, I think that was called something about herping as well. So if you want to check out some of my recent herping trips, there you go. Now, it is rare that I go up into the canyon near my house without doing a little herping because you can find herps nearby. We've got uh, garter snakes, our own species of garter snake, um, the Western Terrestrial Thamnophis bagans, the wandering garters. Um, we've got uh, the gopher snakes. The, it's, um, what is that? I can't remember that. It's Catenifer is the species. And we've got uh, the Great Basin. It's a Great Basin gopher, Great Basin rattlesnakes. We've got uh, the yellow-bellied racers. Um, we've got rubber boas. Quite a few snakes around here. Um, let's see. And Frank, that, that is, actually sounds really cool. Um, I would love to hear updates on it if you end up getting one. And yeah, I think I should get at least 8 to 10. My female's pretty big. Let me see if I can get her out. She's ready. I don't know. Um, they were, you know, a lot of times they're out basking, but I had to look to find this guy. Uh, they seem to be kind of secretive at the moment, but let me see. I don't want to upset anybody. I, I was planning on feeding them a little later today again because the last time I fed them was Sunday and hmm yep okay I found found the lady Ruby the male there was Rufus and I found uh, Ruby here so I'm gonna take her out and give you a look she's you know much more massive than he was I don't know if you can even tell um, And I guess Theropod Hunter, you do have a few species of reptile, but not nearly as many as we do here. That's true. Yeah. I do love the rubber boas. And here, the rattlesnakes are super common um, in the right times of year. Usually for me, it's May and September. There's rattlesnakes all over the place. But I didn't see any last year, which was a real bummer. It was a really dry year. Didn't see any. That just kind of bummed me out. Um... Yeah, maybe that's what you should do, Evie. Someday a baby garter snake. They're so cute. When I got these guys, they're about six inches long, so tiny, um, eating very, very small foods. I do have videos about that if any of you haven't seen that. Got these guys in an expo from Dunn's Garter Snakes in September of 2019, I think it was. Yep, and hopefully she's already carrying some babies. I don't know if she is but I kind of hope she is. They've been mating up a storm for the last, well, since I woke them up. It's been a little over a week, I guess. Those, those European grass snakes, though, those are something. I've seen videos of those. 
It looks super cool. Oh yeah, I love those checkered patterns on the Eastern Garters. They're beautiful. And even though the patterns on these uh, red-sided garters are not as red and not as vivid as they are in a lot of the California red-sided garters, I still love them. And Eileen, um, they like the Reptilinks a lot and I'm planning on buying some more. I ran out and didn't want to buy any while they were in brumation, of course, but I've really thought about getting some more. I mean, they eat a lot of pinkies. But the nice thing is, and this is what I've noticed with my corn snake. My corn snake will eat the Reptilinks but get so much more excited about a mouse. And even, we're talking frozen thought. I mean, I don't give my, my corn snake live mice. I don't give my garter snakes live mice either. No live mice. But, um, my, our corn snake gets so much more excited. Such a different feeding response, better uh, wrap and everything with mice than with reptilinks that I don't really feed the corn snake reptilinks anymore. But the garter snake's feeding response to uh, frozen thawed pinky is the same as it is to a reptilink. There's no difference. So I think I will get some more. Uh, oh yeah, Frank to Tank. You do have some cool snake species in New Jersey. That's true. Oh yeah, Snake Discovery has some great garter videos and some great garters too. <laughs> corn snake Instagram, Sherbert Corn Snake. Might have to check that out. Oh, no, you have a Mexican black king snake. That's so awesome. I love Mexican black king snakes. I want to get some melanistic garters someday. I want to get a Mexican black king snake. I want to get a black milk snake. I'm into all of that. I love the, the just the jet black snakes. I want to get a African black house snake, especially a melanistic one. And Vucky ABX, hello. A 120 gallon tank for reptiles. Hmm. I'm not sure. You could get a PVC one made, though. And Alejandro? Garter snakes emit an unpleasant odor when disturbed. That is often true of wild-caught ones. Um, these have never done that for me. Never musked me once. Um, they just... The captive bred ones seem a lot more calm about that. And also, the wild ones, the wild-caught ones, I used to keep those as a kid. They usually, they'll musk you when you catch them. And after that, they calm down quite a bit and usually don't do it again. That's, that's been my experience. Um, oh, red mason bees there, pot hunter. That's awesome. I'm going to make a, I'm planning on making a, a mason bee house this uh, summer for some na native uh, mason bees, at least one. Oh, I love the fact that the, the Mexican black king steaks often start out with markings and then they just kind of fade as they grow. And yes, garter snakes, it is a disgusting smell. I'm pretty familiar with that, but uh, fortunately they, they usually stop. Usually a garter snake is, will come down really, really fast. I mean, even within just a couple of minutes. But no, Adora, I know what you mean. <laughs> I totally know what you mean. When I was a kid, I, I wore that smell like a badge of pride, like it means I caught a garter snake today. Ooh, that's a cool idea, Heather. Well... Um, hopefully Eileen and, and Ashley, I was able to answer your questions to your satisfaction. Please let me know if, um, I haven't. And if you need some more elaboration on that, um, if we have time, we could do it today. If we don't, I could do it, uh, on Patreon or in a future video or, or whatever you think. But, uh, if you're still in the chat, just let me know. Cause I would love to make sure I answer. Oh yes. Pup 314. I need to do that. Ah. I totally need to do that. I need to talk to my wife about it because I would love to do that. I want to get some. I just saw one monarch again last year. One came to our, our butterfly bushes. Just one. And if I had had, uh, sorry, Ruby. If I had had that thing I'm thinking about, milkweed, then maybe uh, I would have had more. You know, I love this, this row of the lateral scales that's darker. I don't even know what color. Uh, that is, but uh, I like it. Oh, good. Thank you, Eileen. I appreciate that. Um, and I, I'm really excited. And I, I think she's excited about dinner. 
So I should probably go. I need to uh, I'm gonna go visit a local uh, hobbyist here in a little while and pick up some grindle worms. It's been a while since I've cultured them and I need to get back into that. Oh, Eileen, you had an accidental garter pregnancy. Wow. I, I bet the, the babies are a little labor intensive. I, I can sympathize with that. I have raised many things with lots of babies that have been labor intensive, so uh, I know what you mean. Oh, I'm glad others are doing the monarch thing too. That's awesome. Oh, those those water snakes. They they do look kind of intimidating. I can't blame you there. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining in today. It's been fun, and uh, hopefully, you had some snake and/or isopod inspirations today. A little bit, got your fix a little bit, and uh, I have a, a video coming out on Friday. So be sure not to miss that. And oh, I love the idea of a last minute like spike. And oh, Ruby is coming up my arm. She wants to come say hi, I guess. Bye, everybody. Stay healthy, stay safe, and catch you later.